Tell me why do I still feel so alone Don't tell me I'm wrong What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. We are behind the wheel of the Denali yet again towing the Mini Max to its next short term stay. We'll get into that in just a minute. My last reminder to you guys for DDG number six, the two week truck giveaway for Long Bed Larry. It's the truck plus the $5,000 cash. Triple entries are live right now. And if you're seeing this video on the 26th, this is your last warning for about four hours time before that giveaway ends. If you guys want to get your last minute entries in, now's your chance. Procrastination Nation, this one's for you, boys and girls. Try that again. Procrastination Nation, Procrastination Nation. I want to get my ring to smack the lens. Procrastination Nation, this one's for you, my friends. I'll tell you what, it's always fun navigating these super tight little towny roads with this uh, big old setup here. Not the biggest setup in the world. You know, 18 wheelers drive through here from time to time. So they've obviously got an upper hand on me, but it's, it's still a challenge, I'll tell you what. And it's a cold one today, boys. And it's a gloomy, gloomy day. Beautiful day to be alive, but gloomy day. So uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And uh, yep, yep, definitely. The 10 speed in this L5P 2020 is Pretty nice. Makes towing way more effortless. Oh man, they painted the lines. That pisses a lot of people off because they don't even pay attention and they get that crap all over their cars. That's one thing that I'm always paying attention to when I'm driving. Road line paint on your vehicle is a nightmare. Trust me, I would know. Because I've had a, a lot of experience with it. Let's just let's just put it that way. You live and you learn. You know, it's especially fun when you have to thread the needle and play operation with a truck with 14 wides. When they paint both of the lines, usually it's just like the yellow lines or it's the white lines, uh, one side or the other, but generally it's not both. In this instance, man, you can't have any error or you're gonna be dealing with a headache of cleanup. And this setup I'm running here does not leave much room for error. Trust me on that one. All right, boys, we made it out alive. I don't think we made a mess of anything, but only time will tell. Ugh. Guys, the lean is so bad from that drone footage, is it not? I wasn't exaggerating when I was saying the Lancaster lean is on an entirely new level, but my debacle is this. I want to lift the 2020. You guys know that I'm probably going to end up going with the Kelderman lift kit. It has self-leveling air ride in the back. It's going to be really cool. I can't wait to introduce more of that as we go, but it's not ready quite yet just because they're working out some of the fine tuning and the details. And obviously we want them to do that to come out with a product that of course you're not going to run into any problems with. But in the meantime, for our towing need, we are squatting, ladies and gentlemen i mean like big time squatting and there's really nothing that i can do about it i actually ordered a set of airbags like over a month ago for this truck from firestone i ended up buying the compressor with like the self-leveling setup and all that it was nice but and all that it's pretty cool but uh, the big problem is it's it's uh, back ordered so i have the bags and some of the hardware but i don't have the compressor so it kind of defeats the purpose so yeah we're kind of just dealing with it but ladies and gentlemen welcome back to diesel works over here in mount Joy, pennsylvania remember how i had mentioned in the last video that the mini max was back but it wasn't for long well this is is why it's here to get something done that I've pushed off for long enough and honestly guys I've been running on thin ice it's just time before I fall through to get back to ground and that is with the head studs on the truck to this point in time running 11 O's and all those runs and just a ton of fun with the Minimax we haven't actually to my knowledge right now messed up the head gaskets on this truck and it's an LLY and you guys know they're prone for head gasket issues at least subject until we pull it all apart Tyler pulls it all apart inside uh, I just wanted to take care of it ahead of time because I really didn't want to actually create any additional damage if there was already some damage done or if there's not then i just wanted to be proactive and get it done ahead of time oh by the way uh i ended up getting sidetracked and i wasn't even able to pull the mini max off of the trailer from the last video which i said that i was going to do so it still leaks fuel but uh fortunately tyler can just correct that because literally the whole top of the motor and everything on top of the motor is just going to be out look at that though look at look at that truck oh my god All right, guys, so I actually had to run out and take care of a few errands here. I just kicked a huge thing of dirt. What, what, am I, what am I doing tripping over nothing out here? Uh, so the Mini Max is inside. You can see it's no longer out where we pulled it out earlier. And Tyler's been at work pulling this thing apart for a few hours. I'm going to head in and see where it's at. Tyler, did you miss me? <laughs> All right, man. Wow. Mini Max is getting stripped down, ladies and gentlemen. All the coolant stuff is out. Got serpentine belt off. Radiator has been removed. The room for activities in here is real right now and the process isn't even, I wouldn't even say we're like scratching the surface. Turbo still has to come out. Pedestal has to come out. Y bridge has to come out. All these pumps and all that stuff probably is gonna be coming out. Wiring harnesses, fuel lines, all that stuff's gotta be removed. 
Um, literally, this whole entire engine bay needs to get cleaned out because the heads are actually going to be coming off of the Minimax as the, uh, well, head studs, the ARP head studs get installed. And then of course the heads go out for machining just to make sure they're completely flat. We're gonna talk about that here in a little bit, but what I'm most curious about is the condition of the stock head gaskets. Tyler, do you have any uh, guesstimates as to what the condition of these things look like? Uh, probably not too good. Probably not too good? Do you think that they have any rips or gouges in them at all? Uh, if anything, this side will. This, this side, side always has the problem. Yeah? All right. Get crack in the back, back was there like excess pressure in the coolant system uh, when you pulled it open? Pulled it in and popped the cap in there, pulled the pressure, so. And the truck was like pretty much cold. It's not yeah, like it ran so at all. Like I, uh, so something's going on, something's going on. But I'll tell you what, like we didn't like catastrophically explode the head gaskets, which is like actually very, very impressive for uh, all the runs and all the fun that we've had with the Minimax. I think that's like what surprises me most, man, is like they never actually popped and exploded. These LLYs are literally known for popping the head gaskets at kind of stock power. And stock power on an LLY Duramax is probably somewhere around like 300, 330 to the wheels. This thing makes 700 horsepower to the wheels, kind of doubled that figure for torque. You know, if you think about like the 300 horsepower, you call it like 600 foot-pounds of torque. We multiplied that by two, and uh, we put our fair share of runs on it. It's still very healthy, holds oil pressure just fine. Everything in the bottom end is great. It's just those heads that seem a little questionable. Moment of truth, huh? On the passenger side. Tell me it's healthy. See, look, that's where that's how, that's what it does. So it started. They it start started. to do that, and then they'll like crack, and then they'll like push off of here because this is like a separate little ring. Yeah. So this one was about ready. It was pretty much like on its last yeah. leg. I think it might have actually been leaking because because it's, it's separated? not supposed to be separated. Ah, uh, okay. So we did break the seal. Yeah, ultimately so, so, so and you can see some of the gas materials kind of blown off of here yeah but. dang dude i can't even believe that it survived that long honestly considering the fact that this thing has multiple 11 second runs on it low 11 second runs i'm like blown away it was definitely on its last leg though i feel like if we continued to push it and try and get it into the tens it probably would have quit out very soon sooner that rather than later that's for sure all right boys and girls so at this point in time our suspicions were pretty accurate in thinking that the Minimax had been on its last leg. We were really starting to run, like sprint across thin ice, and we would have fallen through uh, in, a, in a more uglier, kind of messy fashion if we didn't kind of jump on this proactively. Now we are halfway through. We already kind of found a little bit of a, a void, if you will, or a break on the head gasket. We're gonna pull the driver's side off now and see what that looks like as well. But everything else underneath, so far, so good. All right, boys and girls, so there are the heads. They're completely out and they're ready to go out to the machine shop so that way they can be surfaced, everything can be flattened out and then they can be back and installed. So at this point, the Minimax ultimately can't occupy a bay here, so it's gotta go out for a little while. That way they can continue to kind of roll their trucks through and make, make sure that they're servicing their customers while these things are out and about and they should be back here, well, in a few days. Everything does look pretty good for the most part on the heads. The only gasket that had a little bit of lift to it was on the passenger side. The driver's side, Tyler had mentioned, actually did not have any lift, which is very, very good news. And uh, well, here it goes, boys and girls. Long overdue day, that is for sure. And a ton of stuff needed to come out of the truck just to get it to where it is today. Just, just to get those two little pieces of engineering out it's kind of cool to see the heads completely lifted off there you guys got the exhaust side obviously you can tell because it's so dirty you've got the intake side here which is in the valley of course you've got your valve springs your retainers and all that good stuff here the camera doesn't focus and never does its job the way that i want it to so yeah that's pretty cool there they are ladies and gentlemen How dare you do? like right there and then you can just kind of hold that there think of it that spot right yeah you're good there's a shadow on your face. Is there? Should I stand like that? Yeah, when you're facing the truck, there's a shadow. There, that's pretty good. Make it seem dramatic? Is that Flip. pretty dramatic looking? Oh, don't be so dramatic. Seems close enough. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. How dare you do Whoa, and here we go! Floor it! Stock and ollie. Here we go, here we go, here we go. No focus, no focus, no focus. Come on. Floor it, floor it, floor it, floor it, floor it. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, now we gotta stop. Now we gotta stop. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. 
That is really not impressive. Not impressive at all. Sorry for the quick change up on you guys. It's a totally different day and well, as you saw, the Mini Max is, is sitting for a little while. It's not gonna be able to get finished in this video, unfortunately, and you know, we gotta kinda keep pumping things out here, ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot going on. Now I wanna make sure you guys are all up to date with everything that we got going on here. So this thing just rev hangs so bad. It literally delayed for like three seconds between gears. I don't think it expected that at all, but I got word from a little birdie that with these trucks with all the emission systems on them, it's actually bad they just let them idle for long periods of time. It can clog up the DPF filters, it can clog up the CR, SCR, whatever filter thing that's behind the turbo, and it, it'll basically just gunk it all up. And I let my trucks idle for long periods of time, A, because I talk a lot, so anytime that I see somebody, I'm just talking, 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 and I leave the truck running, and especially now that it's cold outside, and B, like I just remote started and I let it like cycle two, three times, 10 minute intervals or 20 minute intervals, whatever it is outside of my house. I like to, you know, make sure it gets nice and warm. And then I do drive it around a lot, but like short distances on, off, on, off, on, off. And apparently that's not good for the emission systems. So I was told by this little birdie that it's good to just floor it like as many times as you really can, uh, basically just to clear out the systems. And well, boys, we're under a warranty. So if anything happens, then so be it. I really don't care. We're under a warranty. So we're going to take full advantage of it. Shoot. I haven't floored a little bit when, uh, you know, we got the trailer on so that way we can, you know, really clean things up. Plus it's a stock tune. These things are so tuned down. It's like kind of sad from the factory because of all these, uh, you know, said requirements that we were talking about. So ladies and gentlemen, I've got a really, really important update for you guys right now. See this camera that we're filming on? That's not focusing ever. Here, watch, we'll wait. Let's wait till it focuses. It's pretty bad. This is the Canon G7X Mark III. It's been the camera that I've been vlogging on since I've transitioned away from DSLRs. It's been a nice switch because it's small and I can put it in my pocket, I can toss it anywhere and it weighs like next to nothing. And it has pretty decent audio with the built-in mic. So it's very compact, it's nice, it's easy to vlog with as I'm running and gunning and kind of going all over the place. But the focus is terrible. Let's wait, look at that. What was that, two, three seconds that it waited to focus? And then we'll pull back. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Bring it in here. Watch now if we step out. And then I switch to my face. It's got face detection. It's supposed to be a lot better than it is. I, I did the firmware update on this camera. It really didn't do us all that much justice. And I know you guys are getting frustrated by it. Trust me, I'm frustrated by it. The last thing that I ever like to see when I'm going through and editing these videos is non-focused film. But sometimes I'm saying something and the focus isn't there that I want you guys to hear, so I have to put it in the videos while we're changing things. I just bought a Canon, the RX7, I think, or, or, RX V7, RX 107. All right, that's what it is. I knew it was something like that. The RX 107 is the Sony equivalent to this camera. It's about double the price, but apparently it's like quadruple that of the autofocus capability. We're not gonna run into those issues anymore. It's still gonna have kind of the image stabilization, all those great things that we need for vlogging. I'm hoping it's a nice transition because I know that you guys have been getting frustrated about this. We're gonna, we're gonna hopefully switch all that. So really awesome news there. We're over at Lime Ridge right now. We're gonna finish this video up today with washing the Denali. Hasn't been washed in probably over a month. Being that it's cold out, it's been tough and uh, it's just kind of been nasty outside. So we're gonna try and get it washed up. You can see the uh, forces if the wheel focuses. We're gonna give my polisher CJ a run for his money. We should be able to clean these things up pretty good. Picked up some like gunk or road grime there. That's a, that's a nice one. And then we just have like tar spotting all over the side. I mean, just dirt everywhere this thing is littered we've got water runs all over the place this is always a really tough area on the trucks especially here because it's just getting blasted with stuff from the front wheels all the time so that's going to be yeah probably pretty difficult to get off and then uh, we're going to scrub for a little while here on the back side you guys can just see how dirty the denali is Oh my God, it is bad, boys. Really, really bad. And I wanted to give you all an update as to how the ceramic coat is holding up. So uh, yeah, let's rearrange things a little bit here. Seriously, Siri, she was listening that whole time, man. She is nosy. I'm telling you what, they're listening, boys. They're listening, just be careful. They're always listening. So we're gonna go ahead and look at this. Watch this autofocus. I'm really hoping the new camera fixes that issue, guys. For me, for you, for everybody here, it's gonna be a win-win. So let's get that process started, boys. Boys and girls, this is not good news. Check this out. Nice, good, good, good. 
not good. Oh yeah, thanks so much. My watch is great. No, no. Oh my God, what terrible news. Rain tonight, rain tomorrow. Oh my, oh my God. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, <gasps> last time we'll clean this lens off, probably ever. It's a great camera, but the focus thing for me, no good. Denali's nice and washed and clean. It's gonna rain. And according to the forecast that we just looked at that I didn't look at beforehand, but it's all good, boys and girls. The Denali needed a desperate wash. Looks so good, cleans up so good. And uh, that ceramic coating is still, and I'm gonna say it again, the best decision I ever made. For you guys that don't know, Forged Rick ended up applying a full Kenzo ceramic coating to the Denali just after I picked it up, and it has been a huge help in just getting the truck clean quick. I like washing trucks, but as long as it only takes so much time, it might have to do with the fact that I have a few and it's kind of unmanageable at times to wash them all and keep them all clean at any given point in time just because of where I live and the climate and all that stuff. D-Max Rhino, I'm jealous. But if it takes too long, it's no good and ceramic coating helps tremendously. So Rick, kudos to you, my friend. Nicely done. He even did the windows too, so you spray them, you let them all run off, you give them a quick wipe and they clean up Oh, so nice. Look at that glassy finish there, boys. And that's about where we're gonna end this video. Look forward to getting the Mini Max back. That should be probably in about a week. I also wanna say Thanksgiving is right around the corner. We're gonna have another upload that's up on the 28th. We will still have a vlog going up on Thanksgiving day, but I still wanna wish you guys an early Thanksgiving because I won't be seeing you until later that night. Hope you guys enjoyed the time with your family, your friends, relatives that are in from out of town, relatives that you haven't seen for a while, friends that you haven't seen for a while. Enjoy that time, embrace that time. It's really all about the people in life and those relationships, guys. Embrace them and cherish it, really. And just as a quick reminder, it doesn't have to be just Thanksgiving where we're thankful for everything. Thing. Just remember that. And if you're watching this video on November 26th, today is the last day that you can get your entries until 11.59, 59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time before Dream Diesel giveaway number six is over. That's Long Bed Larry plus $5,000 cash that one of you is gonna be taking home. So if you haven't locked in your entries and you're watching this video, then now it's my last reminder. That said, my Link League, I love you guys, teach you the best. Tap that subscribe button on your way out, and I'll see you all in the next upload.